What's going on guys, Sam here, and in today's video we're going to be diving into a lot of great case studies and uh, content of that nature, as well as the problems with modern CGI and VFX, and how to avoid a lot of those problems in your own films. So continuing on with the concept of on-location shooting, I want to go over some examples of how this can really enhance your final result. Now let's get back into Transformers. In my opinion, this technique is ultimately what sets Transformers apart as some of the best CGI in film that I've seen. These scenes were were shot on location with practical effects, and the work of the VFX team was more in integrating the digital elements with the live action footage, instead of creating the whole scene as CGI. A blended scene is almost always going to give you a more believable result than a fully digital scene as long as it's executed properly, and shooting in a real location will almost always give you a better result in the end. The reason studios don't do this anymore is because it saves money and time, but the results are mediocre in comparison. Shooting on locations creates a whole slew of issues as I mentioned before including weather, lighting conditions, safety measures, and coordinating cast, crew, and a blocked off location all at the same time. Frankly, studios just don't want to have to deal with these considerations anymore. So look at the shot of this bus being destroyed by this transformer. Today this would have been captured close up on a wide lens near the bus. The bus and the whole scene would have been fully CGI, the fire and explosions would have been CGI, and it would have looked like garbage, obviously fake to anybody watching. I'm talking about the Marvel movies here, you know, but look at how Michael Bay and his cinematographer shot this scene. They're using a real bus. The only CG element in the shot is the transformer, and this grounds it in the scene and makes it look that much more believable. The fact that the CG element is interacting with real elements in the scene and the entire environment is real distracts from any imperfections in the digital elements and makes you question what is real and what is not. It makes you feel like this is really happening. And that's the power of what I'm talking about here. There are numerous examples of this in the Transformers movies, and it's something that really set them apart. Well, we like to joke in the effects business that the secret to visual effects is keep it dark and out of focus. But what does that mean? We, well, we have some place to hide. We had a lot of daylight exterior uh, scenes where all these robots had to be lit to look exactly like they were really there at the time that the background plate was photographed. That means that we have to spend a lot of, a lot of time and pay a lot of attention to the color of the light, the amount of light, the directionality of the light, all the tones and the shadows and all the things that are that attend putting that shot together. And so it means that the reflections of the robots have to be exactly what that environment was. So in each and every case, uh, we would have somebody on set recording the background, photographing every direction from wherever the motion picture camera had been sitting. So then when we come back to put our robot into that scene, we actually have that real reflection to put on our robot. Optimus Prime, for example. If you want to learn more about how you can implement these practices in your own films, I have several courses that go over creating and compositing the scenes that you see on screen now using the techniques just mentioned inside of Unreal Engine, which is completely free to use and it's making a huge impact in the film industry. So if you want to learn more about these courses and how to add stunning visual effects to your films, check out the video in the upper right hand corner of your screen and also check out the link below for all the courses that I have available on my website. It'll change your life as a filmmaker if you're looking to add VFX to your films. So now let's take a look at this shot from Black Widow. This scene is so bad, it was instantly turned into a meme and made fun of on Instagram and TikTok. And yes, this was a poorly composited and put together shot, but let's also take a look at the shots in the filmmaking. There's really nothing cinematic about these shots whatsoever. The composition is bland, we're shooting on basically a middle ground kind of mid-range lens straight on the actor's face and then we cut back to this wide haphazardly placed camera angle and we have this flat overcast lighting, we have a blue sky in the background. All of these elements are putting on full display any imperfections in the CGI and the only real element in the scene is the actor. So nothing is grounded in reality. The actor was shot on a blue screen and comped in with an explosion. She's just floating away in slow motion. Everything I've just described had to be approved by the director and the cinematographer. And you know, this is a recipe for disaster in terms of creating a convincing VFX shot. Had this been shot on, you know, a real building with the actor on wire 
and a camera constrained by the real world limitations of shooting in a real location. And if a real explosion had been filmed with lighting that wasn't just this flat, washed, soft lighting over everything, this shot could have turned out completely differently. There was no reason whatsoever that a blue screen needed to be used for a single shot in this sequence, and all of this could have been done on a real set or location and shot in a much more interesting and cinematic way. It lacks any sense of creativity, and that's ultimately what is going to make your film look good, creativity. So just keep those pointers in mind when you're making your own films. You don't want to make that mistake. When you're shooting a VFX shot, it shouldn't be any different in terms of trying to make it cinematic, having good composition. Just because you're adding VFX to a shot doesn't mean the VFX have to be the centerpiece of that shot. So that's all the time that I have this week on this topic. If you guys like this kind of video, let me know and I will continue to make videos on this topic. So this is something that's kind of disappointing to me as you know somebody who grew up kind of watching what I view as kind of in some ways the golden era of visual effects at least in Hollywood, but the current state of things provides a great opportunity to learn from the mistakes of others. And also don't get me wrong, I know there are tons of really, really talented directors, filmmakers, and VFX artists out there making incredible stuff and really pushing the bounds of visual effects. And I really want to dive into those in the next couple episodes here. So there's really so much information on this topic and so many ways to implement this in your own films. Uh, we're going to be continuing on with this series, especially if you guys like it. So if you do like it, leave a comment, subscribe, and like this video. It really helps a lot. And also don't forget to check out those courses over at boundless-resource.com. The links will be in the description if you are interested in adding VFX to your own films. So thank you guys for watching and have a good one.